Please leave a message after the tone. Hello, my name is Adam Sandler, and welcome to So 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 Sandler's, the Sandman Movie Podcast. A gabagoo. Welcome back to So 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 Sandlerus, the Sandman movie podcast, the podcast where we discuss famed cruise ship waiter Adam Sandler. As always, I am joined here with my co-host. How are we going, guys? Good to be back. Not talking about this movie, but I'm just glad we're doing <laughs> We're going to power through this one. Um, I think this episode two is probably going to be the low point of the entire series until we get oh. to Jack and Jill. Yeah, I feel like people might actually look forward to that though. Yeah, it's, it's kind of infamous. Whereas this is nobody knows about it because. <laughs> <laughs> but oh god! Yeah, but before we start, I'd just like to say thanks to everybody that listened in the past week. Somehow, we made it to number forty-two on the iTunes charts for film reviews, which is uh, I... <laughs> which is crazy. But yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. I, I don't know why you did, but we appreciate it. <laughs> now, we've got a couple of good pieces of feedback, and uh, we're, we're trying to take everything on board. But, yeah, Matt, should we just get into it? I think this one, we just we just get it done, eh? Yeah. <laughs> right, this week's movie is Going Overboard. Adam Sandler is a cruise ship waiter fishing for laughs. All my life, I just wanted to get on stage and make people laugh. Hi. How you doing, Errol? What's your name? I hate you! Stand-up comedy is such a sad thing. Uh, this isn't going too well, is it? It's absolutely the most degrading thing a human being can put himself through. There's your punchline. Somewhere between seasickness and murder. This killer comic discovers the power of laughter. This is not your... Adam Sandler is going overboard. But first, let's see a montage of some beautiful women. Hot. What the hell do you mean by that? Comedy. I can't think of anything funny. It's a killer. Yeah, I am funny. Going Overboard, 1989, written and directed by Valerie Bremen, starring Adam Sandler, Burt Young, Alan Covert, Billy Zane, Terry Moore, Milton Burl, and Billy Bob Thornton. Okay, Matt, before we start, I want to introduce you to a new segment called curb that blurb so what i'm going to do is i'm going to read a plot synopsis that i have found online and then if it's good we let it go but if it's a bad one you let me know if you want to curb that blurb and by curb i mean you take it outside make it bite the curb on the side of the road and kick it in the back of the head okay so this is from imdb Shecky Moskowitz, a deservedly struggling young comedian, lands a menial job on the cruise ship that's holding the Miss Universe pageant. The big man on deck of this voyage is Dickie Diamond, the ship's comedian and all-around ladies' man. As an assorted array of thugs, Panamanian mercenaries and terrorists try to storm the ship, Shecky hopes for the big chance to prove himself and enter the exciting world of cruise ship comedy. Um, that's pretty much the movie. Um, I will, I will definitely curb this blurb. Anything to do with this movie, I would like to curb stomp. It is fucking awful. <laughs> it's the worst film I've ever seen. <laughs> this, this is tragic <laughs> as fuck. But I, I think it's pretty obvious that both of us hit this movie, and there's been a lot of, a lot of people online in the same vein as what we're saying as well. So I've got I a couple. Not- I don't think I've seen anything positive about this movie. No, it's all all negative. Um, I've got a review here from 2001 from Kevin Fragmaster 
Bowen for our, uh, from uh, somethingawful.com and he says this is the most disgusting most disgusting kiss ever captured on film. Yeah, that I can and that that was a horrendous moment. That's, that's all he <laughs> it's said not even this movie. not even the worst bit of the movie, but good god. <laughs> and then a couple more from Letterboxd. I've got Oh, okay, I've got two half stars and I've got two five star reviews. So the first one is from Cameron Casper and it's a half star review. I have never seen It's a Wonderful Life, but I have now seen Going Overboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure what he means by that, but alright. <laughs> I, I reckon they're on the same end of the spectrum. And then oh, another, yeah. ha- another half star from Chris. Bought this at Goodwill for $1 just to finally, after all these years, experience Adam Sandler's debut. It will be donated back to Goodwill as soon as humanly possible. Yeah, I, I, I just feel bad for anyone that spent any money on this movie. Yeah, I, I bought this movie. <laughs> I bought this movie years ago, and I remember oh, it being crap then. <laughs> and then we if got... you don't like it as a child, then fucking no one's got any help. <laughs> Although there is, there is like a hundred f bombs in this movie, which was quite funny. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. I guess got so, some redeeming qualities, I guess. I mean, well, there's some. We'll get to that. The, yeah. the cast is a big one. Yeah, that's true. Um, then we got five stars from Gavin. I've said this was my favorite movie while I was high, and I'm sticking to it. God damn it. That's that's a hill to die on right there. You yep. might wanna. You might not want to do that. And then one, one more from Raph Williams. He says, amazing. The madman has been using films in, as an excuse to go on vacation for 32 years. See, I, I've i got some comments about this as well. <laughs> I, I, can, I can completely agree with that, that review. That's, that's on par. How does he do it? Every single I have f- no idea. Every it's single amazing. film, he just goes on holiday. It's incredible. <laughs> like... Adam Sandler is like my absolute hero for movie making. He just is on some tropical islands 90% of the time, living his best life. Yeah, with all his best mates as well. Yeah, it's incredible. So, Matt, taking those reviews on board, how do you feel this review has done critically on Rotten Tomatoes? Oh, this is... What percentage of critics has given this? Critics, there's no way this is over like 20%. There's no fucking way. <laughs> uh, the critics' approval rating on Rotten Rotten Tomatoes is zero percent. Thank fucking Christ! <laughs> but and, that's fully deserved. <laughs> and what do you feel about audience rating, Matt? It should be the same. <laughs> well, eleven percent of audience gave this uh, a positive review. Eleven percent. That is that's tragic. It's uh, it's Gavin from earlier on. It's just, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Someone has just decided this is their favourite movie of all time, you bastard. Uh, Skewing the the results. Oh, I don't know how we're going to do this. It's such a bad film and there's no plot. There's no plot. Like, I know we said last week there was no plot, but in this there is, like, I can't even describe how little of a plot there is. It's just some people fucking around on a boat. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's literally that's all it is like we've been on a cruise we could have filmed we could have filmed something like this no no we problem. could have filmed something better than this <laughs> on a cruise. like i i i have no doubt in my mind that we could have got something better than this um yeah sh- should we just get into it yeah so the, f- the first first thing this opens with why opens with um burt young's character the general finding oh like he's got some porn movies and then for some reason one of them's one of them is the movie of this movie which he's watching whilst being in the movie yeah that's still going i can't describe how this works but this man is a fucking time time was a time lord he's just magic yeah so so the first scene is this dictator trying to watch some porn he has patty does panama Rub me raw, but he decides to watch a movie called The Unsinkable Shecky Moskowitz, which is this movie you know, that, that really grabs you. Which is this movie that he's watching on a recorded VHS, but later on he's in the actual movie, and he's live streaming it at the same time. Like it's yeah, it's got like a live feed. Yeah, 
I don't know how to describe this because it just doesn't make sense. If you're listening to this and thinking of these people like having a fucking seizure, trying to like speak about this movie, yes, I'm. My brain it hurts. Um, so so yeah, this dictator decides to watch uh, the unsinkable Shecky Moskowitz, and then we are treated to a five-minute-long animated. Yeah, I was gonna say this. Sequence. This opening credits last for three and a half minutes, and it's nothing except fucking Adam Sandler <laughs> as a cartoon, just making different faces. Yep. Um. Why? I you wouldn't want your name associated with this movie, let alone the opening <laughs> fucking five minutes of the movie is just that, and it's nothing it's, else. It's just your animated face. It's not even changing expression. It's just the picture just changes. Yeah, like it. Uh, I don't it's know. So how cool. do I don't know. What do you? I mean, this this movie has a budget of what two hundred thousand dollars, and yeah, all of that went on renting the boat. A hundred percent. Yeah, a million percent. Um, so so yeah, this three and a half minute long opening sequence, and then we're introduced to Sandler's character. Um, oh Straight no, that's a lie. A fourth wall break. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, everybody's getting on the boat. It, no, th- throughout this movie, there's a bunch of uh, interview segments. Are they interview segments? I just thought he was just breaking the fourth wall. Uh, no, that... w- w- with the girls. Oh, with sorry, with the um, the Miss. Yeah, with with the Miss, miss Universe. Universe. So miss, yeah, whatever. So is. after after the uh, animation, we've got an interview segment with the Miss Universe girls talk about Shaggy, and uh, all the girls are just being. Uh, pretty mean to him one girl says uh he makes me want to vomit and then an- at least one girl says he has a great concept about life but i wouldn't want him to touch me that's i wouldn't want anyone from this movie to touch me this <laughs> no it's dreadful and then finally we're introduced to sandler's character and as matt says he does a deadpool straight away and just breaks the fourth wall i i couldn't understand though <clears throat> i was like because the opening scene is obviously him putting this movie on so i was like is this a documentary kind of thing like is he just filming himself and and it's never explained oh yeah it's just him talking to the camera but there's some there are some good moments in it where he's like who are you talking he comes in later and he's like who are you talking to and he's like oh there's the camera over there and he's like oh hey camera like yeah it's kind of there's some kind of funny moments but like what the fuck yeah um i guess it's a documentary (laughs) It kind of is, but like I, I'm, I, yeah, I don't really know. That's what that's that's what I thought it was going on anyway. Yeah, and then as Sandler's breaking the fourth wall, he explains what the movie is. He says that there's no budget; it's a loosely thrown together story, and that's... that they're just there to take the piss, pretty much. Which is, you know, that's the best. That's, that's all you can say about this movie is they literally just them fucking around on a boat. Yeah, and I and I think it's a fair warning to anybody who wants wants to watch this movie because if you make it past that point, you've got nobody to blame but yourself. <laughs> if anyone that wants to watch this movie, don't. And then, that's all I can say. Honestly, it's dreadful. Uh, all right, we can do this. We can get through this. Right, and then. There's another extremely long se- um, sequence of Sandler just walking up the steps. Oh yeah, he's just going up like he's... six flights of ramps. Yeah, just and it's and it's a full it. shot. Yeah, there's that, no that takes <laughs> another couple of minutes, and and then we we just get a bunch of uh, in, in the interview segments again, and it's just like extremely beautiful women, and then there's one shot of a guy with long hair who looks like a woman, but. Has a beard. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was going on here. Um, they re- it really adds nothing to the movie that these segments are in. Like, it kind of ties in, he says something, and then it just kind of segues into them answering different questions. But it, yeah. I don't know why it's there. The, the, there's no need for these interview segments, like, at all. No. Like... I, I understand that it adds to the Miss Universe aspect of the movie Wait, i guess but there isn't any it's that's all it is the, the only thing that gets referenced later on is miss australia yeah and that that's the only thing that's it it had there's no part of this plot that needs them there and then 
after this, we're introduced to Sandler working the deck as as a waiter. Yeah. The guests are being horrible to him, like calling him piece of the shit and whatnot, and just abusing the waiter for bringing over the wrong drinks. And then a seagull shits in. <laughs> I'm just going just wrote down a note of bird shit drink and that was it. Yeah. A seagull shits in a customer's drink and this customer's mean to Sandler earlier, so he just serves it to her anyway. And then as Sandler's serving his drinks, uh Dickie Diamond is also on the deck, putting on a comedy show. The main the main I get is he the, like the main antagonist in this movie? Yeah. He has to be. No, is he? Apart from I don't know, because Sa- Sandler's some characters turn up later on. <laughs> I'm guessing he's Sandler's main antagonist. True. But yeah, Dickie Diamond's putting on this comedy show and it's honestly just the worst jokes in the world, the meanest jokes in the world. It's fucking awful. Like, I don't know if it... It's obviously intentionally bad, but it's like so bad. Yeah, it's dreadful. And then he's just laughing at his own jokes and he's got the worst laugh in the world. Just for Eric had a bad laugh last week. On. Oh god, this has this been nice like... to see. <laughs> Sorry for anyone wearing headphones there. <laughs> but I just I I can't tell because he breaks the fourth wall here and again. The, and yeah. And I just can't tell what's going on. And then he goes straight into like dreaming about this and then he just murders him. He just pulls a gun out in a dream sequence and just fucking shoots him. Sandler pulls out a gun and uh, kills Dickie Diamond, but then we realise that it's a dream sequence. And then we just introduced to Sandler's mid Bob. Yeah, Bob, the other, the only other waiter on this boat. <laughs> I, I, I've written a note down here that Bob laughs like a dolphin. <laughs> That's a, fair enough, yeah, there's some terrible laughs in this movie. Um. Yeah, and, and then we just. Oh, fuck's sake! I hate this film so much. The next note I've got written down here is just gross goth guy. Um, because we just go straight to. Is that the thing that's next? For anyone that doesn't yeah. know, I I watched this movie about two hours ago. And I honestly couldn't even fucking tell you what happened. It was... Tra- oh, it was just awful. Oh, no, b- before the goth guy, we- we've got... Um, Sandler doing stand-up to Bob in his cabin. And he just bombs. And Bob's like, don't worry about jokes. You're funny, naturally. Like, just go, go up there and just talk and you'll make people laugh. And then... Yeah, they go see Dickie again. Oh, no, they see Dickie twice or something. I don't know. I, I've got down, they go see Dickie's afternoon show and he's just doing the same <laughs> shit jokes. And then Sandler pulls out uh, pulls out a gun and kills Dickie. And, and then I've written down, uh, Sandler's got a joke here. And he's like, I was speaking to my father the other day and he said, Shecky, I think you should marry someone who has the same beliefs as the family. And then Sandler goes, Dad, why should I marry someone who thinks I'm a schmuck? And then, yeah, it turns out it was a dream sequence. That and still then, might be the best joke in this whole movie. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think it is. And then we meet the rock star, who's just this dirty, grubby, black tooth oh, slime bag. Horrendous. He's is... I, I, I don't know if he looks like that in real life or if he was done up for makeup, but he's the dirtiest person <laughs> I've ever seen on scene. Uh, he on literally screen. looks like they've picked him out of a bin yeah. in Rochdale. And then the manager's talking about selling his rights to sell a Barbie doll for forty dollars, forty million dollars. Oh, forty million dollars. Yeah, forty million dollars. <laughs> nobody, nobody is getting an action figure deal for forty million dollars. That's outrageous money in the eighties as well. Jesus, yeah, it's crazy. And then Sandler just goes, um, he breaks the fourth wall again, and he's like, "Oh yeah, we've just added these characters to the movie for some variation." They're not actually important to the plot at all. <laughs> Very relevant. Like, no one in this movie is is relevant to the plot. No. There is no plot. 
and then yeah um then croker the rock star he talks about his number one sing- single i want to slap your cat that's uh yeah, that-, that made him millions and millions of dollars and then after this, we just get another interview segment with the girls. And the question is, what would you do with a million dollars? And there's just a bunch of boring answers. Like, oh, Shit answers. I'll put it in the bank. i put it in there the bank. i buy some clothes. But um, <laughs> the, the last girl, she says, um, I would help people pop their pimples. Mmm, pus. Why? Why? What? <laughs> if you watch Dr. Pimple Popper and all that bullshit on YouTube, there's something fucking wrong with you. None of that. And then, yeah, that kiss happens, which is probably the most disgusting kiss on screen. Oh, it's I've just ever awful. Seen. It's just like both tongues extended out of the mouths by like four inches, and they're just lapping each other like dogs. It's fucking yeah. awful. <laughs> it's it's honestly disgusting, and that goes on for a bit too long as well. Oh, it definitely goes on a bit too long, and it's a bit too loud as well. It's just gross as fuck. And then, <laughs> and then af- after this, I guess it just cuts forward a couple of hours because Sandler's done now, even though he's still in his uniform and he's sat in the bar with Bob and uh, Croker, the, this rock star. And Sandler tries to tell Bob a joke, but he doesn't mm-hmm. understand it. And but the rock star, joke. the rock star understands it. Yes, yeah. Bob is. I don't know if Bob is just thick or doesn't think Shecky's funny. I think he's probably just thick. I think yeah. Everyone in this, like every character, is just written to just be the worst person in the world in this movie. And then some ladies like, come. Everyone's just a cunt. Yeah, and then some <laughs> la- ladies come in and take Croker away, and then. Sandler is being a pick me boy here because he's like, Oh, I'm so sad. No women like me. I'm not funny. I'm not funny. And then, then some girl comes to take Bob, and Sandler's even more alone now. And then we get Alan Cover as the bartender. I, I, Alan Cover's the bartender. He doesn't really do much in this scene. No, it's, it's just kind of there. Yeah, he's there. And then Miss Australia comes in, and Sandler tries to flirt with her and she tells him to fuck off pretty much what is it? he says hello and she tells him to like go and fucking die or something yeah <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to have a laugh with this movie but honestly it's so unfunny it's impossible I get, it's, it's not tr- I'm, we're genuinely trying here this is it's tough going uh and then dicky comes in and sandler uh, pl- plucks up the courage to ask Dickie if he can open for him, but Dickie doesn't care. And then Sandler tries to tell him a joke about something, but Sandler's showing no confidence here, so it's understandable that Dickie does not want this random guy to open for him because he's not funny, he's not being very loud, he's not being very straightforward, he's just being this little kid who's just super shy and too scared to do anything. And Dickie's like, Yeah, I, I don't care. And then Miss Australia comes back and tells Dickie that Sandler tried flirting with her and then Dickie just knocks him out. Just cracks him straight in the face. Yep. No questions asked. And then uh, as Dickie punches uh, Sandler, Dickie goes, here's your punchline, you stupid fuck. W- which, again... One of the better parts of the movie. Yeah, another great line. <laughs> and then... I, I've just written Alan Covert's advice is uh, poetically beautiful. Do you remember what he said? Because I don't. No idea. No, no, no idea. But... <laughs> couldn't fucking tell you. But apparently I thought it was beautiful. And then... <laughs> and then, yeah, everyone's coupled up on the boat and Sandler just says he's depressed and wonder what the future holds for him. And then cut to another interview segment. And again, they're all boring as fuck answers. And then we just cut back to Sandler, and Sandler's like, okay, I'm going to meditate now. And then he just yeah. goes, hum, hum, hum. And then it's suddenly the morning. Yep. 
chose not to sleep, and then just the next scene is him just going to bed in the morning. Uh, and we get more dream sequences. Yeah. The, yeah, fuck knows, eh? Like, what's the first um, dream sequence? He he has, like, a really bad nightmare. Yeah. And then he, he, the he, second... He has a nightmare about being in an asylum, and he's got a straight jacket on, and then Dickie's just doing his stand-up bit. And he's got and an apple in his Dickie mouth says, for some reason. He's just, yeah. just got a full apple he, as a gag. D- Dickie says to, to Sandler, who's uh, in a straight jacket, he goes, is that a straight jacket? Or in your case, it might be a homo jacket. <laughs> and I, don't, I, I don't think you could... could I think I missed that, but <laughs> fucking hell. You, you couldn't get away with that now. Oh, the 80s. And then we've got another animation sequence of uh, Dickie ripping his eyes out. Yeah, where did, like, he just went and we cut to a cartoon and he just kind of, like, pulls his own face off. Yep. Where did, That's where, it. What, where did that come from? I don't know. The, yeah, but it's, like, the only bit of cartoon in this movie. Like, there's... I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know what to say about this 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 movie. This segment, it just doesn't make any sense. They just cut to a cartoon of him pulling his eyes out, and then that's it. Yep. That's the movie. Um, and then, yeah, then it cuts to a nice stream, and Sanders just rolling, rolling around on the beach with a bunch of beautiful ladies. And then that gets ruined by Bob, who turns up in drag as Sandler's mother. And but but uh, Bob as Sandler's mother goes, uh, Shecky, I don't want your penis falling off like your father's did. And then Shecky just wakes up in his cabin, and Bob is going on about how fantastic last night was with this girl that took him home. Yeah. <laughs> Another nothing scene. And and apparently this girl, her, just... her name was Debbie with an I. And uh, she's a hustler model, and apparently in her photo shoots, she enjoys using pigs. Whatever that means. Let's just swiftly move on, eh? Like, I don't yep. know what the fuck is going on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're really trying, but there's nothing to go on for this movie. And, th- and then I think they're in the kitchen or something, and Sandler tries out some new material with uh, Bob. And his joke was, I was speaking to a girl and I said, I'll do anything you say. I asked her on a scale of one to ten, um, what am I? And she said, oh, you're an eight. So I peed on her shoes. You're an eight. And you're an eight. Yeah. Brilliant. C- Fucking brilliant. C- classic player. That is like, then. that's like the, I don't know. It's just supposed to be a shit joke, but <laughs> there's just nothing redeeming about anything. No. And then <laughs> it's just... Bob doesn't find Sandler funny at all, but Alan Covey comes in, saves the day, and he says, Shecky, I think you're funny. And then after this, we just get a boxing boxing match between... Yeah, they're, they're just telling jokes that are landed on each other, but... this this The referee has the best line in the movie. So we cut to this boxing scene with Dickie and Sandler... And uh, the referee says, I don't want any headshots, I don't want any shots below the waist, and I don't want any food or drink on the mat. It's a new one. Brilliant. <laughs> and and for, for some reason, he's a little person as well. Yep. <laughs> for absolutely no reason at all, the referee is just a little person. Yep. And then <laughs> they start fighting and t- saying jokes, I guess, but none of them are funny. Yeah, but, yeah, so, like, but they, do, they don't they don't throw any punches like the punches thrown are the jokes which i i kind of get but but there's no why does it need to, to be joke? a boxing match but, like one of the jokes was hey dicky you, you look like sasquatch and then the other joke was like hey sandler you have a big nose or whatever what is like, it yeah the- he's just like you you're like sasquatch like let me braid the hair on your back or some <laughs> bullshit like what <laughs> they're not funny and then after this week um we cut to a very important interview about world peace and this is where the next subplot of the movie starts because 
um, Miss Australia goes on about how horrible this dictator in Panama is and how he kills people who don't agree with him. And then we cut back to the dictator watching this movie on a pre-recorded VHS, losing his shit because Miss Australia doesn't like him and thinks that he smells. Yeah, and he's just like the most depressed man in the world, just yeah, just questioning his entire life. And and because Miss Australia said that he smells like pizza, the dictator tr- decides to get two terrorists in to go chase this boat that's on a VHS that's pre-recorded that the dictator's watching in his room. In what then, it seems uh, to be real time. Yeah, even though it's a pre-recorded VHS. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> is he fucking Twitch streaming it? Like, what is going on? <laughs> I, I have no... Th- this is probably the most confusing part of the whole movie. Oh, 100%. This makes no sense. I made note of this. I was like, what the fuck is he watching? And then, yeah, he gets these two terrorists in, and these two are probably the funniest characters in the movie when you can understand what they're saying, because most of the time they've just got extremely heavy stereotypical racist accents yep um none of it makes sense and then the dictator's like oh yeah you gotta go kill miss australia because she said that i smell like pizza and then these two try to figure out what kind of pizza the dictator smells like and then they go like an old cheese pizza with anchovies and then they ask the dictator what kind of crust and then brilliant the dictator's like i want you to go kill this girl on this vhs and the dick and terrorists are like, uh, it's impossible because that's pre recorded. And then the dictator's like, I don't care. Go kill them. Because he's like, he pulls out a gun on them then and he's like, I say lick toilet, you lick toilet. I say pick nose, you pick nose. I say kill Miss Australia, you kill Miss Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and then th- these two terrorists decide to um, go. On a boat Go to find this, this boat, yeah. Yeah. No no other information. They just decide just... to go and find this boat. And They're just on they a boat, say... on a cruise. And then uh, <laughs> they say she is deader than a koala on a freeway. She is deader than a shrimp on a barbie. Because she's Miss Australia. And that's funny. Classic Aussie banter. And then <laughs> um, Shecky's sad that he's single... And now the dictator's super sad that he's single. And the dictator decides to sing a song. He goes, It's a sad, sad world when you look like a pizza. It's a sad, sad world still when no girl wants to meet you. So yeah, he's upset that he's got no ladies. And he smells like a pizza. (laughs) Fucking hell. For fuck's sake. Yeah, uh, and then we just cut back to the movie and uh, cut back to the cruise ship and Dickie is just super drunk and he needs a shit. So he's holding his ass as he's walking around the cruise and then he goes to throw up. And then and then his, and then his hat falls off? Yeah, his hat flies off into the sea and Dickie goes for a shit and locks himself in the toilet. For the rest then, of the movie? Yeah, Dickie's locked in the toilet for the rest of the movie. <laughs> And then Miss Australia sees Dickie's hat in the sea and just presumes that he's dead. And yeah, then... I wrote this. I was like, nobody went to search. Nobody checked on anything. They just go from straight to, oh my God, there's a hat in the water to they're having a eulogy for him at a, at a funeral. Yep. They, they, they nice. set up the funeral in like five minutes long, uh, five minutes time. And again... This priest is another fantastic character. First of all, there's a massive shot, a close-up shot of the priest just sticking his finger up his nose and eating a booger that he's found. And then... (laughs) Oh, it's just fucking awful. (laughs) Then this is another fantastic line in the movie. The priest um, tells everybody to look, look in the Bible and he goes, Let's look in our books at Psalm 29, Jackson 5, Red Sox 4, Yankees 3 at the bottom of the 8th. Nice. And then we've just got some guy crying and screaming to the world that nobody on the cruise ship is going to make them laugh and brighten their day anymore. So this inspires Sandler to 
become the cruise ship comedian. I guess. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what? Something I've ju- I was looking at that guy who's just shouting doesn't get a name in the movie, but he gets a credit as an acting list on. Oh, does he? <laughs> yeah. What's Gabe he Sachs in the movie? as Funeral Mona. Oh. He doesn't get a name. It's I, I just- guess. He just gets an acting credit for it, but fucking oh god! I I wonder if he's added that himself to Wiki, and then oh that's got to be going for that's got to be for the CVA. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And then um, B- Billy Zane shows up as King Neptune. Yeah, what what's this about? Like, is he actually like? Is it supposed to be King Neptune? I thought it was like a character on the boat that just is there, like doing uh, a I fucking don't show or something. But I, I, it might be actually Neptune. And then, yeah, B- Billy Zane shows up King Neptune and he does a speech. And then, well, he tries to do a massive speech, but then Sandler cuts him off. And he basically says, Billy Zane, we don't have the budget for you. Like, we can't keep you on the screen for too long or whatever. He, yeah, he says, yeah, King Neptune tries to extend his story, but Sandler's like, we don't have the time or budget for this now. Move on. And then Neptune just cuts his whole story down and uh, tells Sandler to remember the power of laugh. Which is the plot device of this movie that yep. doesn't really do anything. And then we cut to the terrorists on the boat trying to find their ship. And one of the terrorists, Ahmed, believes that he's uh, extremely funny. And... This is a foreshadowing for later on. And then it's Sandler's... Um, we're getting up to Sandler's first um, show and he's freaking out with nerves and then there's another musical number here to inspire him to yeah. be better with him and Bob in the cabin. It's nowhere as near <laughs> as elaborate as what Billy Madison was, but... Probably one of the better parts of the movie. I, I can't remember it at all. I've just got a note written down that says small musical number in the room question mark. <laughs> couldn't couldn't tell you what happened, but it's there. Uh, and then Bob is like, Oh, Shaggy, you're a funny guy. You just need to be yourself on stage. Like you make people laugh naturally. And then uh it's uh D- yeah, Dickie's still uh stuck in the toilet for the rest of the film. And then Sanders on stage, but everybody in the audience is super sad because Dickie has just died and nobody wants Sandler there. And Dick, uh, Sandler starts his thing and then Billy Bob Thornton's here in the crowd as I, and I knew it was Billy Bob Thornton, but fuck me, looking at that, you would have absolutely no idea that was Billy Bob Thornton. Yep, I, I know. I was like waiting for him to turn up and I was like, there's no fucking way. No so, fucking way. So, yeah, Sa- Sandler's bombing and everybody's booming, uh, booing him. And then uh, Sandler asks um, Dave what he does. And he's like, oh, I'm a construction worker. And then Sandler's like, oh, what do you construct? And then Dave just goes, I construct buildings. What, what the fuck else would I construct? <laughs> and then nice. everybody continues <laughs> to boo Sandler. And then Croker... Everybody's like, oh, let's get Croker on stage. And they're like, Croker, Croker, Croker. And then Croker gets on stage and performs I Want to Slap Your Cat. Yeah. And this Which is just a full entire, music video. And his entire band just turns up out of nowhere. Yep. yep. Full music video uh, in the middle of this movie. <laughs> and then Sandler realizes he sucks. And he introduces King Neptune to Bob. Because King Neptune's just on a. Sandler yeah. goes to Sandler goes to Bob and like Bob, I suck. Blah blah blah. Um, I had inspiration from King Neptune, and he's like King Neptune. Like Sandler's like, oh yeah, he's just over there drinking a cocktail or whatever. And we just. Oh yeah, that's where he's just having a little smoke on the side. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Bob's like, oh, I'm gonna be honest with you, Shecky, I hate stand up. I think it's it's sad, it's pathetic. I think it's the most degrading thing a person could ever do, um, do in his life. It's it's pathetic that you're hanging out your dirty laundry and 
pining for that attention you never got when you were a kid. <laughs> and then Bob well, then. tell Bob tell Shecky, instead of being yourself, why didn't you tell jokes next time? Despite saying earlier, instead of telling jokes, why didn't you be yourself? And then more terrorists and now back to the dictator and he's watching the terrorists on the TV. Yeah. He's watching the terrorists he just sent on the pre-recorded movie. Yep. And now yep. he's ha- happy because he's got this woman who's just randomly there. And then... Yeah, she just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, this woman comes out of nowhere. And she's like, oh, my dad... You threw my dad in jail because he didn't vote for you. And then she's like, can you get him out? He's like, yes, 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 I'll get him out in five years' time. <laughs> nice. She's funny because um, she, as an actress, is like easily, at this point anyway, by far and away the most famous person in this movie, and she's in it for about 45 seconds. Who Who is she? No idea, but I had a look on her Wikipedia before, and she's like the, one of the last of the golden age of Hollywood, I believe it said, and she's been in absolutely loads of shit. But, but we got Titanic's own Billy Zane. Yeah, but I mean, in 1989, she's oh, yeah, definitely true. like... <laughs> what she, she's called Terry Moore. Let me just let me just reel some of these off her. She's an account. Oh, she's she was an Oscar nominee. Oh wow. She's she's ninety three now, so she's had a good innings. St- still kicking. Still, she's still going. She's still cracking on, mate. But yeah, she was in movies from like the fucking the forties. Oh, Jesus Christ! Fair play. To yeah. Her. And, and now she's cut down to a tiny role in the worst movie i've ever seen yeah um just horrendous uh, but then... she's still cracking on she did something in 2019 oh did she yeah fair, fair play is going for it fair so, play if anyone's still listening i'm just trying to find anything interesting about this movie to talk about <laughs> i don't blame you if you've cut this fucking short <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh Christ! <laughs> All right, so she's there, and then, and then we cut back to the ship, and Dickie's still in the yeah. toilet, and he's like, "Get me out, get me out!" And then Croker and his manager hear him, and now they believe that the ship is haunted because Dickie is supposed to be dead. Um, and then then we get a scene back in the cabin, and this is probably. One of the best bits in the movie. And Check is like, uh, should I wear the pink shirt or the green shirt? And then... Oh, yeah, this is... Bob just I said I made note so. of this. Just wear both. This... And then <laughs> but Bob is like, oh, I think you should wear both. And then he's like, oh, okay. And then uh, terrorists are uh, lost in the middle of the sea. And one's like, who's the navigator? And the other one's like, I'm not the navigator. It's like, who's holding the map? I'm I'm holding the map. And then the one's like, if you're holding the map, you're the navigator. And it's like, oh yeah, I am the navigator. <sighs> yep, that was a most necessary scene in the movie. And we've got Sandler's <sighs> second stand-up get, uh, set. He's telling jokes and he's still bobbing. And then he says something about a ring. Oh, yeah. He's got a joke about a ring and this robber oh, and the, trying the to steal an engagement ring. And he the goes, Buddha. The Buddha joke. <clears throat> yeah, and he's like, um, next time, why didn't you put butter on a finger? It'll come off easier. And then Terrace finally make it to the boat, apparently. No, we've got Milton Burl yet. He goes to oh, meet Milton. Yeah, yeah, he just I, has no, a dream sequence of Milton Burl. Th- that's after. Is it? So, the, so the terrorists find the boat in the ocean before they get to the boat, and then um, Sandler says something. Oh, he breaks the fourth wall again. He's like, "Do I know nothing about comedy?" Um, and then I was like, "Yeah, you've made this movie, so I guess not." And then we get the dream sequence with uh, Milton Burl, um, and he's just a super famous entertainer. Yeah, I take that back. Milton Berle is probably the most famous yeah. person in this movie. <clears throat> he's a super famous Why is Milton Berle in this movie? Because he's, <laughs> he, he was probably at the end of his life and the heyday of Golden Age cinema was over, so he's just looking for a paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell. They can't have paid him much money, though, eh? <laughs> no. Um, and then Sandler goes, Hey, are you famed comic Milton Berle? 
and then he's like, um, "I I hope I am because I've had a lot of fun with my with his wife." <laughs> and then he's the only good bit in this movie. He's actually quite funny, but like, it's yeah. too little, too late. <laughs> but, did you hear how much canned laughter was in this scene? Oh, it's awful. It's there was so much canned laughter in the scene, and then yeah. Um, Milton Bull just gives Sandler a load of comedic advice, and then again, doesn't he just give him like ten jokes to reel yeah. off? And then he's just like, "Yeah, you'll be fine now." Um, yeah, y- you'll be fine. <laughs> just remember, the most powerful thing in the world is the power of laughter, which is the same advice that King Neptune gave him earlier on. And then it's just terrible. I don't know. I don't know why, but I've got a note here before this. It's just I think there's like a montage where they just have all the models and they're just filming them for about five minutes. Oh right, yeah. And just all it is is my note says yeah, was uh, this film uh, just an excuse to to have models in swimsuits? Because that's all yeah. it is. It's uh, like uh, like there's a like a uh, fucking five minute montage uh, of them just <laughs> fucking film filming models in swimsuits. Yeah, I I got that down as well. But yeah, I think it was. It is a good five minute montage of just. But it's just bikini it's girls. It's relevant. Yeah, that's all it is. Um, and then after after that dream sequence with uh, Milton Burl, oh, yeah. S- Sandler's killing it, and then we hear gunshots. The terrorists have arrived on the boat, and then they chase people around and they get up to the stage. They take the mic off Sandler and they're like, "Miss Australia, where are you, Miss Australia?" And then. Despite being cruise ship uh, workers, uh, Bob and Shecky decide to hide rather than protecting the guests on the ship like they're probably supposed to. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, I do exactly the same. And then, <laughs> um, and then Miss Australia's in the boat where Shecky and Bob are hiding and Bob goes... Hey, who's this? And Shecky goes, Oh, this is Miss Australia, Dickie Diamond's girlfriend. And Bob just goes, How am I supposed to know? I haven't done any scenes with Dickie Diamond and his girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the only notable bits of the movie. And I was like, You know what? That's going crack. I'll give you that. I can't uh, argue with that. Yeah. And then <laughs> that, that's probably the funniest bit. And then the terrorists are still on the mic and they're like, Miss Australia. We want to meet. Uh, we want you to meet your mayor, and then she's like, "Oh my god, they want me to meet the mayor." And Sandler, Sandler's like, "Nah, they're just speaking broken English. They want you to meet your maker." <laughs> and then they have like a Scooby Doo chase around the around the boat. I was gonna say they have a full. It's so long this Scooby Doo scene. This it's boat like, chase. It's like eight, eight minutes long. It goes for so long, and then the co- the. the we- then... In between all this happening, Adam Sandler is wearing a green shirt, and then it cuts to a different shot, and he's wearing his pink shirt, and then it cuts to a different <laughs> shot, and he's back to green, and it switches like eight times. And I was watching this like, is this intentional, or is that like, have they just fucked up and they just they just film this on different days? And then I realized, oh, he told him to wear bold shirts before, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, all right, that's pretty funny. And then... <laughs> This is the funniest bit of the movie. But fucking what? Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and then after this chase, Bob and Miss Australia start hitting it off. And then Miss Australia is caught by the terrorists after she suggests that the terrorists kill her main competition. And then Bob yeah. and Becky are <laughs> arguing about who, who saves Miss Australia. And then Bob eventually decides to go, but he gets knocked out straight away. Yep. And then... Somehow, Adam Sandler's character manages to get the, the terrorist back on the mic. Yeah. We, uh, we get some more fun. This guy's trying to tell some jokes. And then you have the greatest hostage save of all time, in my opinion. Where Bob just comes over and just sli- just just basically grabs her. And then yeah. just walks off. And that's it. That's hostage. Hostage scenario is over. <laughs> I just don't understand what's going on. Adam Sandler basically saves yeah. the day. Tells them that they can be in his fucking movie or like a TV show or something. 
He yeah. saves the day with the power of laughter, everybody. We've all come full circle. Uh, I, I, I've got one more line here. So when Sandler was... Uh, when Sandler... Before they got up on stage together, Sandler asks uh, the terrorist, he goes, what do you do, Ahmed? And Ahmed's like, I'm a freedom fighter. I fight for the people. And sometimes I deliver for dominoes. <laughs> and then, yeah, God. they become mates. And then the stand-up and then... The dictator's watching them do stand up on on the screen, and sand sounds like, "Yeah, come move to America with me." And then, and then... D- Dicky gets himself out by praying to God. Yeah, and then he says, "Praise uh, the God." Door <laughs> open, and then he's, as soon as soon as the doors open, he just goes, "You stupid motherfucker! I'm an atheist." And then there's a guy <laughs> dressed as a banana, and then Dicky tries Wait, to what? T- yeah. There's just a random guy dressed as a banana. I completely missed that. Just randomly there. And then All right, I'll take your word for it. Then Dickie comes back to the stand up stage and he tries to take the mic from the terrorists and the audience don't like it because they want to hear the terrorists tell jokes. And then uh the terrorists throw Dickie overboard. Which is my my main argument with this movie is he was the only person that goes overboard. Yeah. But the guy can't, who gets, can't name your whole movie after that, surely. The, the guy who gets thrown overboard is clearly a stunt double as well. <laughs> and now the dicta- wanna... dictator's really upset with uh, with the terrorist, so he shoots his TV, and then King Neptune shoot, uh, shows up again, and uh, he introduces Sandler to his daughter called Slimy. Oh, yeah. And then the movie the just queen ends. Queen of the Sea. The movie ends with uh, Sandler hooking up with a mermaid and Dicky Diamond drawn into his death. Yeah, he just has a life raft that slides under and then he's just dead and flips off the camera. Yep. Nice. The end. We end with a with a little flick off and thank fucking Christ that's over. I, I watched <laughs> I've watched this three times in the last two weeks. How? How I, on earth? I don't know. But each time I've watched it I've just upped the speed. <laughs> No, it's it's, oh, it's honestly such a bad film. It's dreadful. That was like it was painful. Yeah. I was like, I've put I put off watching it for so long because I was like, okay, it's gonna be bad, and then I finally got there and it was worse. For the people who don't know, me and Matt have been planning this for a while, so I decided to watch it like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Yeah, and. Yeah, things were just getting pushed back. So by the time it got to this episode, I'd completely forgotten everything <laughs> that had happened. I, wa- so I had to watch it again. I watched this movie an hour before we recorded this podcast, and I still couldn't tell you anything that happened in that movie. Yeah, you you probably did it. Uh, did it the best way. <sighs> yeah, sorry All everyone. Right. If this is tough to get through, <laughs> Gen- it, it Gen- was genuinely t- sorry. <laughs> it was tough for us as well, but I, I promise things do get better from here on out. Right, I uh, do have some good trivia though from this movie. Yeah. Go on, yeah, Sh- shoot off some trivia. So I was like looking through the cast on here, seeing who we can do. Obviously, you got Burt Young as the general. If anyone doesn't know who Burt Young, is he's um, Rocky Balboa's brother-in-law from the Rocky movies. Yeah, uh, Alan Covert as the bartender is um he's one of the just Adam Sandler's mates from like the early days and he's just one of his producers. He's in uh, like a bunch of stuff. Um I, I, Alan Covert the... pops up as bit parts everywhere, doesn't he? Yeah, he's like the he's the disheveled ca- caddy in um in Happy Gilmore, like he's it, in uh his, his he's in Big Daddy, he's one of the gay lawyers. Big Daddy. Yes, yeah, you're one of the gay lawyers. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so you obviously, obviously like Billy Zane, but he's in it for about 35 seconds. Ter- Terry Moore doesn't even get a name in this movie. She's just listed as mistress. We have Milton Burl for some reason. Billy Bob Thornton, who, if you didn't know that was Billy Bob Thornton, you would have absolutely no idea. And we get down to, so yellow fucking this guy who's in the band. He's, he, I don't know what he's acting for, but he's supposed to be like this amazing um, animation artist. And he co-created Phineas and Ferb, 
And then he also worked on Hey Arnold, The Simpsons, Rocco's Modern Life, SpongeBob, and was like a long time director for Family Guy. Who? Uh, Dan Povermeyer. Po- Dan Povermeyer? Dan, Dan Povermeyer? Yeah. Wait, who is he? He's the rock star in this movie. He's uh, the yellow teeth guy. That's not Dan Povermeyer. That's what fucking Wikipedia claims. What? Croker? Yeah. That is not Dan Povermeyer. I'm telling you, mate, that's apparently him. No way. I swear to God, yeah. I was like, this is fucking crazy. How has this happened? Because <laughs> D- D- Dan Povermeyer, he's massive on TikTok right now. Yeah, I saw this. He's got a huge TikTok and he's got like fucking hundreds of millions of views. Yeah. Like, so he- yeah, apparently this is Dan Povermeyer. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I need to. I need to confirm this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, while Kerry's having his little breakdown over there, I'm gonna go through the cast again because we've still got some good good ones to go through. Um, Stephen Brill is uh, he's the priest. And he um, returns later on. Like he is just basically a director for a bunch of Adam Sandler oh. movies. Uh, directed oh, Little oh, Nicky. Oh, oh yep. Yeah. Okay, so Croker is Adam Rifkin. So the main rock star is a gentleman called Adam Rifkin. But yeah, Dan Povermeyer is in this movie as a character called Yellow Teeth. And, yeah. And yes. Th- is that so not? I, no. Oh, okay. So, right, Croak right. is the main rock star. That's where we were getting confused. Oh, okay. But, I'll give you that. Fuck but, me. Yeah, Dan Povermeyer, co-creator Phineas and Ferb, is in this movie. Is in this movie for some reason. <laughs> Should we uh, reach out to him to see if he can give this movie a shout out, this podcast a shout out? Oh, please say, what was it like to be part of this movie? Oh, uh, okay. I've, I've, P- Peter Berg uh, is also in this movie as Mort Ginsburg. Who the fuck is that? No Who idea. is that character in this movie? I don't know. But yeah, I've, d- I've just got him written down as director of Mark Wahlberg movies because his last five like directorial credits, uh, Lone Survivor, Deepwater Horizon, Patriot's Day, Mile 22, and Spencer Confidential all star in Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> oh. And he also directed, and he also directed Battleship. So that's something. B- Battleship's not bad. <laughs> yeah, it's dreadful. And the, and then Al- Adam Rifkin, like we were saying before, it's, is actually Croker. Wrote Mouse Hunt and Small Soldiers. So fucking shout out to that guy. Yep. And Adam Rifkin's also Miss Spain, apparently. Yeah, who? Oh, that's the chick with the beard. I that, guess that has to be. Fuck, we're really trying here, guys. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, I've got a couple of other pieces of trivia here. Um, with this movie, Adam Sandler was so embarrassed that it's not included in his official filmography on his website. So I'm glad it's not only us that feel this way. Adam Sandler's uh, website has a list of all his films, but this one's left off. Um, This movie was re-released in 1996 after the success of Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. Yeah, I saw that. Why would why would you want to re-release this? I'm I'm guessing it was a (laughs) production company. um, Oh yeah, just trying to get a quick cash grab, trying to make some um, more money. And then, <laughs> finally, as of 2021, this film is number 15 in IMDb's list of the bottom 100 films of all time. Deservedly so. Yeah. It's dreadful. The fact that Don't it's watch so it. bad. Yeah. I completely skipped this. There's no need for anyone to ever watch this movie. Right. Matt, this movie has failed with critics. It failed with audiences. It's failed pretty much everywhere. So, Matt, how many sandbags <laughs> out of 10 would you give this movie? Bearing in mind that you give Billy Madison a 3.5 last week. 
Yeah, this is... I don't think you could fill an entire sandbag with this movie. So, what are we saying? I, we're saying none. It's nothing, and it couldn't stop the wave of shit this movie is. That's all I've got to say. Perfect. So, you, you've given it a zero. <laughs> I, I think I'll Absolutely give... Absolutely not. I will think I'll give it a 1.3... No. Nah. Yeah. 1.26... There's a couple of funny lines here. Bob was a good character. I I enjoyed the banter that the terrorists had, but there's <laughs> Sandler's performance is absolutely dreadful in this. Yeah, there's oh, just the less said the better about this entire fucking movie. I'll give it a one point two six for a couple of funny lines that did genuinely genuinely make me laugh. Um. It was ambitious for Sandler, to his first film, to try and swindle a holiday, which he, <laughs> which I guess he, sw- he did. He, s- he swindled a holiday on a boat with yeah. a bunch of models. So you know what, I can't argue with that. I'm gonna give it a yeah, one point two six, and it could stop the wave of that bird shit filled cocktail that Sandler <laughs> <laughs> gave Jesus to Christ. that. Uh, <laughs> guest at the start of the, the movie poor lady um but i think we should just end it there i think we're just fucking done we've reached it we've hit an hour that that's yeah. fucking oh my an, god that's an hour too long talking about this fucking movie that was tough um yeah if if people want to subscribe to this podcast please subscribe leave us a five star please don't review. judge us on this episode yeah L- leave us a five star <laughs> review and but actually tell us in the comments what you actually think Follow us on all social media, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at so Sandlerus Pod. Uh, send us an email at so Sandlerus Pod at gmail.com. And then hopefully we shall see you next week for our third episode where we will discuss the movie Shakes the Clown. I which, can't fucking wait. Which is better than this, but... That's not saying much. But it was still a struggle. <laughs> no, th- th- there's a couple of fans out there for Shakes the Clown. Like, it, it, it's a lot better than this film. But yeah, follow us on socials. Leave us a review. Apart from that, uh, I guess <laughs> we'll see you next week. Sorry for ruining your evening for an hour. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. I know this movie's ruined mine. Yeah. Oh. All right. <laughs> but, Take it easy, guys. Have a good time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Oh no!